Welcome to a new episode of The Simpsons Did It. I'm your host, Stephen Skolansky. And I'm your co-host, Robert Skolansky. And this episode, entitled Bart Gets Hit by a Car, is the most literal episode. Wait, does Bart get hit by a car? I think Bart gets hit by a car. Okay, we're going to have to find out. The title of the episode is Bart Gets Hit by a Car. Guy, could you imagine having an episode titled that and then Bart doesn't get hit by a car? I know that'd be funny just to play it out <laughs> through the entire episode. When's Bart it seems get like it? it seems like every episode that kind of focuses on Bart is very literal. So we got Bart yes. gets hit by a car, Bart the general, Bart the Bart, daredevil, Bart versus Thanksgiving. Bart versus Thanksgiving. I every Bart centric episode, it's the most literal episode name yes. ever. So, so this is this is the first episode of 1991. This aired on January 10th. Yay, we're in a new year. No, well, not really. Well, actually, this episode might be in a new year. I haven't done the math on it yet, but it might be close. It'll be close. So recap, a lawyer suggests there may be profit in the pain after Bart's collision with Mr. Burns's car. So Bart does get hit by a car. <laughs> by car. Yes. Perfect. Okay, perfect. I like it. Uh, the chalkboard gag this week. I will not sell school property. <laughs> uh, I wonder what he sold. Stapler, pens, pencils, books. Protractors. Chairs, protractors. To but Lisa. they don't live in a fair. They no, don't live they in don't. a farm. They don't, they don't live in a fair. Desks. Nope. Bart De- sold a desk. Oh, uh, Bart. And, yeah, he gets in trouble. He yep. must have like, whatever's like out of his backpack behind the school. Hey, anyone need a pen? Anyone need a pencil? <laughs> or a trench coat? Like opens up yeah. the trench coat. I got rulers. <laughs> so the couch gag this week. Uh, the Simpsons all sit on the couch and Homer bumps everybody off. He literally bumps everyone off. He, you see him shaking his little hips yeah. there. So he wants all the, couch the couch all to himself. And what guy, after working tirelessly at a nuclear power plant, does not want a couch all to himself? Well, to be fair, Homer doesn't work tirelessly because he falls <laughs> asleep on the job. Okay, fair enough. All right, so we uh, kick off the episode with Bart skateboarding. Oh, wait. Yes, Bart yes. skateboarding down the road. Through yep. Springfield, through he, wet cement, somehow. Over, and somehow over a manhole cover. Well, with you a can, guy in it. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. You know, the physics there say he should have tripped and gotten hurt there. Unless he did like a jump. But the way the animation is, it seemed like he skateboarded over the entire thing. Okay, if you are skating fast enough. Now, obviously at a skateboard, you can't. But if you are moving at a fast enough rate of speed... You can go over. It's kind of like if you put a golf ball hard enough at a hole, it'll go over the hole. But it's still going to hit the lip. It's still going to hit the lip. It would. He he would would still get hurt. No, it would get over it. But but in this instance, I think with all that mass, physics would say he would hit the manhole cover and then fly into the air. Exactly. Okay. So he skates by Mort's Deli which is a real deli. We have one up here in uh, Minnesota, but it's nice. uh, based out of Chicago. Okay. And the, he also skates past a Sushi Yes. And that one's based out of New York. So once again, where is Springfield? Chicago, New York. It's everywhere. Chicago, Chicago York. I, I'm going to say that I've said this before and I'll say it again. Springfield is where you need it to be. <laughs> it's like... The okay, you haven't seen Doom Patrol, and this is a really no. odd reference. There's a road in Doom Patrol that literally shows up where you need it most. <laughs> it's like I mean, a, that makes sense. it's like a what's that called? I can't think of the name. It's like the door from. Well, I mean, it's not really the door from Harry Potter when it shows up when you need it, but it's always in the same place. Yes, this road in Springfield just move around from location to location it's like another dimension that re- just shows up on earth yes uh and for some reason they did a title on the episode and this is what and the third one now not including trios of horror i think so so there was tall tale head uh this one and i feel like there was one more that showed uh, a ti- that showed a title card maybe but it is episode 23 technically it is yep. the 23rd episode of The Simpsons. Well, I thought it was weird that they showed a title card with the episode number. They didn't do that on the previous ones. I'm no, like, it was just Tall Tale Hill. Tall Tale Head. Just to let you know, we're on episode 23. 
if you're not keeping score. Episode 10 of season two, episode 23 overall. Yes. So as Bart is skateboarding, he gets to a crosswalk and Smithers and Burns are in a car and Smithers like, watch out. And Burns hits Bart with his car. My question is, why is Burns driving and not Mr. Smithers? Well, Mr. Smithers is, but Mr. Smithers is his assistant. Is the chauffeur. I know, but it is a 1948 Rolls Royce. I mean, would you not want to drive that car? I mean, you're not wrong. I would love to drive that car. And then afterwards, Smithers gets out, checks out Bart, says, tells Burns to call an ambulance. And Burns is like, ah, just give him a nickel and let's get out of here. First of all, that's illegal. Yes. But Highly Burns illegal. Above, but as we learn in the episode, Burns is above the law. Correct. So it does show that Smithers is a caring human being. So why does he put up with Mr. Burns? Does he just get paid a lot of money? No, he's in love with them. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> so, so he will. He will do whatever it takes. Yep. And so, so have, Bart has, yep, Bart has an out of body experience where he goes up an escalator because he's and there's dying. a voiceover who is Phil Hartman. We'll get to him in a second, and he passes by what he said, Grandpa Simpson. So he passes by on the escalator. He passes a cloud with his aunt uh, Hortense and Great Grandpa Simpson who is strangling a young boy. He also sees his first cat, Snowball, <laughs> who with tire marks to... across his body. <laughs> like, and as we, as we will, that. and as we will learn, Snowball was hit by a Chrysler. We, we don't oh. know that yet. We do get to it, but yes. Oh, I can't Snowball. believe they did that. That was pretty funny. So um, Phil Hartman's voice is like, please hold on to the railing. Please hold on to the railing. Please don't spit off off the side. And Bart spits off the side. And apparently that was enough to send him to hell. Yeah, it was the last straw. It was the last straw. It was the last straw. And so um, hell awaits Bart. So Bart wonders if there's anything he could do to avoid returning to hell. Uh, the devil informs Bart. Oh, sure. Yeah. But uh, you wouldn't like it. Bart goes, okay. <laughs> you know. Gotta but be I do guy. like one. Yep. And I do like. I'm Bart Simpson. Who the hell are you? When he's introducing himself to the devil and the devil and the devil's which, like, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, this is the first appearance. Now here's the thing. This is the first appearance of the devil. Do we ever see him again? Not as not Ned Flanders. As, not, no, I don't think so. Not as Ned Flanders. And so the devil says, please allow me to introduce myself, which is a reference to the Rolling Stones song. Sympathy, sympathy for the devil. Yep. So he's like, ah, please allow me to introduce myself. I'm the devil. Ha ha. <laughs> and you've earned eternal damnation for your lifetime of evil deeds. Bart spitting off the escalator just clinched it. So I do, I did read up on this and apparently the first iteration of the devil was super scary. And they were like, yeah, this needs to get to- toned down. So apparently this is the toned down version of the Simpsons devil. Yeah. He wasn't that scary. But no. I like how the devil uses a computer to look yeah. up Bart's misdeeds. And Apparently I did look it, was... it up. I did look it up. The first commercially available computer was used in like the late 70s. Oh, yeah. But not so, that size. I think like yeah. that computer was more mid 80s, like the Apple IIEs. Yeah. And so he's looking it up and he's like, oh, you weren't supposed to arrive until the next time the Yankees win the pennant. And he's like, you know, within the next century. And so I, you you wrote that the next time they won the pennant was 1998, which was with, which in which is within the next century. No, no, no. He says in the next century, not within. He says in the next century. Oh, yes. So that is not a century length. But he it's not... within the next century. No, no, no. He said in the next century. Are you sure? Okay, Edgema correct us if uh, we're wrong. <laughs> Um, so he kind of floats back up to earth and goes through the hospital and, you know, back into his body. Cause that's how an out of body experience works. I do like the fact that one of the hospital rooms he passes had Jacques in it. <laughs> you know, I, I was kind of wondering who that was. I was like, you know, paying close attention as we do. And I was we yeah. were going through each episode and, or each level of the hospital. I'm like, I'm ready, ready, ready to see like a dead rat in the walls or a T-Rex skeleton. You know, the weird. Oh, yeah, they do that when when they when they float up. But unfortunately, no. Um, So we get uh, we get Lionel Hutz in the room with the Simpsons. And this is our first appearance of Lionel Hutz. 
voiced by the late and great Phil Hartman. So sad he's gone. He was God. gone too soon. One of the ones that has gone way too soon. Yes. It, and Marge is like, Bart, you went away. And no, he's you... like, he's like, oh, you didn't, you, you're here with us. Like, I didn't go away, mom. I was miles and miles and miles away, reeling in agony in the pits of hell. And you were there. And you were there. And you. And you. I've never seen you before. <laughs> uh, and that that line is a reference to Dorothy when she wakes up in The Wizard of Oz in the 1939 film adaptation. So that's kind Ooh. of a cool reference because Wizard of Oz, I mean, we grew up watching it. I mean, you get a lot of quotes from Wizard of Oz. This one I don't think is uttered as much as... Oh, uh, no. Uh, I'll get you and your little dog, too. I feel like I have said this, though, where like, oh, yeah, you were there. Like, if I had a dream and I'm like, you were there and you were there and you were there kind of thing. But not as often. Yep. Not as often as some of the other ones. No. Um. So Lionel Hutz is saying, oh, well, you know, if you want want more money and want to sue, uh, <laughs> Mr. Burns. sue Burns, give me a call. And so Homer uh, gets Lionel Hutz's card, which turns into a uh, sponge and Homer thinks it's classy it is pretty pretty classy and then Lisa's like you know in, in most of the words like you're pretty much a shyster and Lionel and Hutz is like that's a big word for a small girl to know yep which Lisa as we know is super super smart so yeah. Hibbert walks in after Lionel Hutz goes you know chasing another guy through <laughs> the hallway yep. he's like Lionel Hutz attorney of law and I, I like, I like this. I didn't write it. I think you did. I did. Yeah. Yeah. Hibbert touches Bart's injuries and says, I'll quit it. Just like after Bart got the tattoo and yep. had to give it removed. Yeah. I'll quit it. quit it. But then, but then he also touches Bart's toe as well. And he does yeah. it again. So apparently being hit by the car, he had a bump on his head and a hurt foot. Man, these Simpsons, man, they get in the worst accidents, but they get so lucky. Especially Homer. <laughs> Falling down the stairs. I mean, only his trick back. Fell down a cliff. <laughs> twice. Yeah, twice. Just a couple bumps and bruises. No biggie. Yeah. So now we go to the plant. Homer is like, what am I supposed to do? March into Mr. Burns's office and demand satisfaction? And Smithers comes in. And he's like, uh, Homer, Mr. Burns wants you to march into his office right now. So was Mr. Smithers yeah, just I, standing there or like just. just I think it was just on his way. Yeah, I think it's just on his way to tell Homer. And so Mr. Bird says, at last we meet. And I wrote my notes. And We've talked about this. <laughs> yes. But I do like how Homer says, uh, nice to meet you. But he says it in a way, knowing that Mr. Burns knows who he is. Like a sarcastic. Uh, yeah. Like he said it in a way where Homer knows Mr. Burns has met him. But he's like, oh, OK, I got to be nice about this. Yep. And uh, Burns is surrounded by his lawyers. Yep, and he offers him a offers him a check. You know, I'm going to give you a generous settlement, hundred dollars, hundred dollars. And Homer's like, uh, "This isn't even going to cover the medical bills." And Burns is like, "Oh, I see your game. I'm going to I don't tangle with me, or I'll crush you like this plastic cup." And it takes Burns like five, like twenty seconds to crush it because he's an old man. Yep, it was pretty funny. And then he's like, "Get out of my office!" And it's kind of sad. There's no trap door yet because otherwise you would have pulled a lever. And Homer, Homer says, "I can throw myself out." Yep. And so Homer wipes uh, his sweat off his forehead, and then obviously he's using. I don't know why he's using a business card. Granted, yes, it turns into a sponge, but I don't think you would normally use a business card to wipe sweat off your forehead. But if it's a sponge, you would feel that it's a sponge, and you would use that to wipe. I forehead. guess. I do like the fact that they actually committed to the the joke that Lionel Hunts Lionel Hutz's business card was a sponge. Yes, they they kept that going. Yeah, uh, and the business card reads: Lionel Hutz, attorney at law, as seen on TV. Klondike Five Law with an extra W, clogging our courts since 1976. He's so apparently, uh, the... Lionel Hutz has been in the business for a very long time. Yes, he is. He's a he's a shyster. He's an ambulance chaser, which yeah, we'll uh, soon learn. So Homer goes to Lionel Hutz's office, which is in a mall. Yes. I don't know many lawyers that work out of a mall. Bad um, ones. Yeah, and it's next to the yogurt nook, okay. and where two uh, two big nosed uh, hatted twins sit. Hmm. Yeah, they sit there all day long. 
So Homer is in the office and they're talking and Lionel Hutz hears an ambulance and he gets up because, as you said, he's an ambulance chaser, but Homer's in the office with them. And he's like, so, ah, all right. But yeah. I do like how Homer's like, you sure have got a, you got some education, Mr. Hutz. It's like, yes, Harvard, Yale, MIT, Oxford, the Sorbonne, the Louvre. <laughs> the Louvre. Uh, I, I don't believe you get a law degree at the Louvre. No, but you can get I an art degree at the Louvre. I think he, I think he just went. Oh, I guess I think he printed those. Uh, oh, he sure did. I mean, maybe he visited them, yes. but I don't think he went there. No. So and they go so, to uh, Nick, Doctor Nick Riviera's office, which is, as you wrote, two doors down from Lionel Hutz's office, separated by gum for less. Yep. I, I don't know what that means. What is gum uh, for less? Cheap gum. Oh, okay. Maybe. Yep. Really bad gum. That's what it means. <laughs> so signs on Dr. Nick's wall. I went to medical school for four years and all I got was this lousy diploma, a female body inspector plaque, and a smooth operator plaque. He is a smooth operator. And this is our first appearance by, hello everybody, I'm Dr. Nick. Dr. Nick Riviera, who is voiced by Hank Azaria, and as you could clearly tell by my character work, is a bad Ricky Ricardo impression. Yes. And so he also says he comes close to, like, or I think it's Lionel Hutz. He's like, this yeah. is the closest thing to a doctor. <laughs> he comes well, close Lionel to Hutz is the doctor. closest thing to a lawyer. Oh, yes. And so he's like looking at Bart's uh, x ray. And he's like, your son is a very sick boy. Just look at these x-rays. He's holding up a large x-ray of Bart's head and yep. spiky hair. It has the spiky, spiky hair. 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 I, yep. And you see that dark spot there? Whiplash. And Homer's like, whiplash? Oh, no. And this smudge here? That looks like my fingerprint? No, that's trauma. <laughs> I can't. You can't see trauma on an x-ray. Well, I guess you can, like a broken wrist or something. And so Dr. Nick asks... Uh, Marge about their family physician and Marge is like, Oh yeah, Dr. Hibbert, he's been so great to us. And this is where we learn that Dr. Hibbert went to Johns Hopkins medical school. Where didn't our cousin, uh, yes. Danny go to John Hopkins? He, he did. He went yeah. to Johns Hopkins. I believe so, he was there for three years. Yeah. So our cousin is just as good as Dr. Hibbert. Maybe Possibly. better. I'm going to go better. Cause <laughs> Hibbert does get kind of, yeah, maybe, he gets a little, uh, little bit later yeah. on. So, but Dr. Hibbert's a very good doctor. Well, a very smart doctor. I don't know if good would be a, a good term to use, but he's a very smart guy. Yes. Not not Dr. Nick. Not Dr. Nick. He wants an arm for a leg. I, I was going to say inflammable. I didn't know that meant flammable. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Burns wants to fire Homer. Uh, and he actually uses Homer's not, well, technically it's his full name, but we don't know that yet. Yeah. Um, he's like, um, he wants to fire Homer J. Simpson and Smither tells him to uh, think of the headlines. And Burns is like, Burns fires ungrateful employee. Another smart move for Burns. Hooray for Burns. <laughs> Clearly. And then Smither's like, oh, we'll get bad publicity and blah, blah, blah. And Mr. Burns is like, oh, that's smart. Let's wait to fire him. Exactly. And so we cut back to the Simpsons house and Hutz is coaching Bart to not lie. It's like, can you roll your eyes back in your head? Oh, you mean like I'm dead? Yeah. It's like, boy, it's uh, unnatural. I feel like if our uncle and aunt saw this episode, they would probably roll their eyes at Lionel Hutz because they're both lawyers. Well, yep. They used to be lawyers. Yep. And Lionel yeah. Hutz is not no. a good attorney. Nope. And Marge is just so like, she's like, I don't know why I'm letting you guys do this. Like, it yeah. seems... You know, Mar for for and Lisa too. Like this is this episode, you really see the Marge and Lisa on the same page. Don't lie. You know what I mean? The, but here's the thing: Lisa yeah. lied in just the last episode. Now, granted, it was a watch itchy and scratchy, but she still lied. She can't be a goody yes. two shoes. Not all the time, at least not at home. But this uh, is so, in a, a legal sense, so I guess I get it. Yeah. So we get the first appearance of the blue haired lawyer and I don't think he ever gets a name. Nope. Throughout the He's entire show. Blue lawyer. Yep. And so we go through the testimony. So Bart goes up first and Bart's side of the story is 
it was a beautiful sunny afternoon. I was playing in my wholesome, uh, wholesome childlike way when realize, uh, little realizing that I was about to be struck down by a luxury car of death. <laughs> and Burns is all like angry and trying to hit him. He has like, what is that called? Uh, like a sight, like the yeah. like, the circle with the two lines, yeah. like a sight down, on it, trying to run sighted, him I over. Yeah, I do like, yeah. so after Bart gives his testimony, Burns has an outburst and the judge uh, uh, says he'll cite him for contempt. And Burns goes, you wouldn't dare do that. And the judge is like, you're right. I wouldn't dare do that. Yep. <laughs> was... So that is not an ethical judge. No, the ju- not the at judge, all. The judge has control of the courtroom and clearly Burns has the influence. Yep. And so now we get to Burns' side of the story. He's like, oh, it was a beautiful day. The sun was shining. I was driving to the orphanage to pass out toys. Suddenly that incorrigible Simpson boy darted in front of me. And I I like the fact that even in his own story, he's not driving his 1948 Rolls Royce. He could be. It could, like, in all honesty, it didn't have to be the devil car that Bart showed. It could have been a nice version of the Rolls Royce. But he's driving a pink Volkswagen (laughs) Bug that's a convertible. Clearly, he's already lying on the stand. Maybe it was just Smithers' car. We but don't they know weren't... that now. But but you know, like, when you're presenting evidence, you're going to say, okay, this is the car that hit him. I this know. Is, <laughs> like, so in a courtroom setting, if this is Burns' events where he's saying, oh, we were driving this car and he came out of nowhere and he just tried to hit himself that like he tried to hit the car to get money out of me also i like in burns's version where he's like oh yeah smithers wanted to leave him for dead but i wanted to call an ambulance and you know he cried out for bart because he felt bad about it and clearly that is not what happened smithers wanted to call for help burns wanted to leave a freaking nickel now to be fair burns obviously he's evil and wants to get away with everything but in Burns's defense, he literally could have told the truth. Yeah. And he might not have had to pay, you know, the million, million dollars that Lion Hutz was. They could have come up with some sort of settlement. Yeah. But he could have told the truth and been completely waived of all. Because, I mean, it, in all reality, it was an accident. Yes, yeah. Bart probably should have stopped at the crosswalk, but he went. Burns... Being that, I don't know if it was a stop. I know there was a crosswalk, but I don't know if it was a crosswalk with a stop sign, crosswalk with a stoplight. I guess, I, I know the way that the scene was cut. I don't think we saw one of no. those two things. So but- I know, I know in Wisconsin, I don't know about with Minnesota a lot. In Wisconsin, if there's a crosswalk and there's somebody in it, you have to yield to that person. Yeah, but a skateboard's slightly different. Even if no, you're no, going no, by- no, 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 no. No, if somebody is in the crosswalk, you have to yield to that person. Doesn't well, you do, you you do. But if you're so, driving... this is a so in this instance, it would be at least in Wisconsin standards a failure to yield, probably a ticket. Burns might have to pay medical costs, and that's it. But okay, if, if he you're driving, truth, if you're driving thirty miles an hour at a crosswalk and no one's in the crosswalk yet. You could drive through it. Bart is coming in at five, 10 miles an hour on a skateboard. You would be slamming on your brake as hard as possible to. So the way the scene, the way that scene is cut though, is Bart is laying in the crosswalk. So he was clearly in the crosswalk when Burns hit him. It wasn't like he clipped him on the side. No, he didn't land in the sidewalk, but he landed that fast. He wasn't walking. If you're going fast (laughs) enough, you can't slow. I mean, if you're walking, yes. I would say if Burns hit Bart while he was walking across the crosswalk, yes. That is his fault. He would have seen him coming. But Bart was coming from around a corner, and he might not have actually yeah. noticed he was coming. Now, Burns is a horrible driver. He's probably blind as a bat. Either way, there should be some repercussion on Burns nonetheless. Yes. So after Burns gives his testimony, nobody in the courtroom believes it. Oh, yeah. Not, not, not even his lawyer believes it. Yep. And Burns realizes he hates his lawyers because they're a bunch of yes men. Yeah. Well, I guess in this instance, not really yes men. Yeah, they probably told him to tell on this the truth. And it's like, okay, we got to settle. And Burns, is, I invite him over to the house. Homer has some wine. He's like, oh, you're trying to butter me up. And so no, he's trying to get him drunk. Oh, because he said, yes, are you trying to get me drunk? And Miss Ring goes, yes, yes. 
And so he offers him $500,000. And I like the fact that the $500,000 $500, is what Homer would have got had they won the, the, million. the million. Because So, he, so here's heard, the thing, though. With any large amount of money, he wouldn't have... So let's say they got the million. He gets half of that because Lionel Hutz gets 50%. You still yep. got to pay taxes on that 500,000. So in reality, they only get like, I don't know, 250, 300. But that's not the point. The point is Homer <laughs> would have gotten $500,000 one way or the other. I mean, he would have had to pay taxes on Burns' 500 too. Correct. Well, it would have been off of 250 because he would have only got No, he wouldn't have had to. No, 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 no. If Bur- well, I guess I if I was Homer, I'd dump Lionel Hutz and be like, okay, I'm, I'm, because Lionel Hutz wasn't at the at the house. So that's the other thing I have to bring up. If you are in a lawsuit, you never go anywhere without your lawyer. Yes. Now, granted, so Lionel Hutz is a the... horrible lawyer, but Marge and Homer should not have been at the Burns' at Burns's mansion without Lionel Hutz. They shouldn't have gone in the first place with Lionel Hutz. That is just, just a horrible thing to do when you're in the middle of a lawsuit. You yes. don't talk to the opposite party without your lawyer present. Fair enough. But Homer decided to go. He could have taken the 500, cut Lionel Hutz out because Lionel Hutz didn't negotiate anything. Uh, it depends on what kind of contract they sign. Lionel Hutz is stupid. I don't think they signed a contract. I mean, you might be right. <laughs> but then Lionel Hutz <laughs> might sue Homer for his half. So at that yeah, point, you maybe. might as well just give him half. Yeah. So Marge spoils Homer's chance at getting a million dollars because she's like, I'm tired of lying. We shouldn't be doing this. We, we have a fraudulent doctor and Burns and Smithers are behind a picture watching him and listening. And this is why you bring your lawyer and this is why you do it at an office setting. So they yes. can't leave and spy on you. Yep. Horrible. And, Bur- and then Burns is like, okay, offer time is up and rips it up. And then he's like, release, release the hounds. The hounds. <laughs> And then, so now court does not go well because nope. the blue-haired lawyer decides to put Marge up on the stand and... Marge tells the truth. She has to tell the truth because she's, you know... Although, to backpedal a little bit, so when Bart was on the stand, the judge is like, oh, do you know the difference between a truth and a lie? And Bart goes, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. And they allow it to happen. Like, no reasonable judge is going to be like, no, that's a yes or no, not a maybe. Like... This whole courtroom stuff is not realistic. And there is an episode with Itchy and Scratchy where they do another courtroom thing. And it's actually pretty realistic. And we'll get into that. But this, in my opinion, is not at all what would happen in a real courtroom. And I do like how the blue haired lawyer asked Marge, what do you think of Dr. Riviera? She's (laughs) like, I don't even think he's a real doctor. (laughs) Uh, and that's when everything fell apart and so i mean homer this is i'm surprised at this episode this is the one thing about this episode that just yeah you could be pissed yeah you could this is just one thing about this episode that kind of irked me a little bit so homer goes to moe's because he can't stand being the sight of wife and he's at the kitchen table like just you know you devil woman and just i mean so here's the thing about the ending of this episode is the writers wanted an emotional ending to this episode. I mean, this yes, they it wanted. had it, but it was a horrible choice, I think. Well, I mean, if if you sued somebody, now granted, the Simpsons did it through not the greatest means, you know, they they went to a fraudulent doctor and they hired a really bad lawyer. And they had they had burns on the ropes, and maybe they should have taken the five hundred thousand. But if your significant other cost you a million dollars, well, half a million in this case, because after fees and taxes and whatnot, I think I'd be pretty pissed. Yes, if it was real, if it was something that I could have won legitimately. Yeah, this was kind of illegitimate. Yes. So Homer heads to Moe's to drink himself to death. Because, you yeah. know, cost, Marge cost him a million dollars. And Marge goes down to Moe's. And I'm 
gonna go out on a limb and say this is probably the first time she's ever been inside. Oh of yeah, because all the guys are hooting and hollering. I like the fact that Moe's like, "This isn't even ladies' night." Ladies' night, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Homer's like, "Oh, it's it's just my wife." Yep. And so Marge goes up to Homer, and you know, they kind of have their emotional. You know, we've been married for ten years, and this is like the one thing that. My question is, have they actually been married for 10 years at this point? Bart's because 10 Homer, years, Homer, no, no, no. Homer Bart's, isn't... Bart's 10, years, Bart's 10 years old. She got pregnant with Bart. Oh, uh, it's true. And they got married while she was pre- or pretty okay. much at nine months. I was going to say, because Homer's not good with math or birthdays. So no, that's but the math, add, math, math adds up. Okay. Because Bart, Bart was had to have been at his like third trimester. Yeah. And they got married while Bart was pregnant or Marge was pregnant with Bart and Bart's 10. So yeah, math adds up. So Homer is like, I don't, I don't know if I love you anymore. And Marge's like, well, look me in the eyes and tell me you don't love me. And so Homer like starts at her feet. It's like, I still hate her. I still hate her. It goes up. And I I just realized this now they stopped at her chest. Yes, they did. (laughs) And I was like, and Marge is like, look at me in the eyes. eyes. And, you know, most guys, they, they usually stop right there. I don't know if that and, was necessarily an inside joke or not, but. Uh, and so he looks at her in the eyes and he's like, I can't stay mad at you. And so they kiss and make up. And Mo's like, all right, next round is a third price off domestic only. Yep. And so Marge or uh, Mo's like, okay, everybody, for the next 15 minutes, you know, 15. one third off. Yeah. One third off every pitcher. One per customer, domestic beers only. Hey, no sharing. <laughs> um, and one one other thing before we go to our final thoughts on this episode, I would like to point out for all the uh, rich people out there, it's like Mo is like, ah, oh, you're better off. Rich people aren't happy from the day they're born to the day they die. They think they're happy, but trust me, they ain't. I mean, I'd be a little happier with a little more money. I don't think if I had, you know. 400 gajillion dollars that's not going to make me any much happier if i had you know maybe four hundred thousand dollars. i think most point is stuff doesn't make you happy the people around you make you happy that is that is his point most of the time the people around you most of the time make you happy yes <laughs> so i i love this episode i enjoy it immensely uh you know we get phil hartman as lionel hutz and we get dr nick riviera and we get the devil and it does kind of start out a little weird with the the episode number that was kind of that threw me off a little bit i'm like does is this necessary but the plot is really good obviously a lot of the legal stuff is unrealistic i mean it's a 22 minute episode so obviously they speed through some of it but it's still funny and as you the ending yes it's It's a little out of place to me. Um, I mean, if you take a look back at every time Homer and Marge on either side have a fight, those were better than this one. Yeah, I think it was kind of forced that I I get Homer is upset, but I can't imagine he would be so upset that he wouldn't love Marge anymore. I get it. A million dollars is a large sum of money, but it's kind of Homer's own fault for a him losing out on a large sum of money and B if he was a better employee, they probably wouldn't have really needed it. Yep. So in a way it's kind of Homer. I I mean, yes, Bart should have gotten some money. They Burns should have paid the medical bills and maybe given them, you know, a couple, maybe a couple hundred grand or something outside of that fact though. I still enjoy this episode. The punches still land. I'm not going to go with a five. I am going to go with a four mm, sprinkles. Uh, but I do. I did really like this episode. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to give it a five. But like you said, the beginning and ending yeah. just didn't hit me the right way. But the middle, everything <laughs> after the first minute and before yeah. the last two minutes was spot on. It was oh, yeah. a really good episode and put together really well. The introductions of the new characters was done really well. Oh, yeah. It was the right. I think it was the right way to introduce yes. them. It was, it was definitely the right way to introduce these characters onto the show. Oh, absolutely. So I'm going to do um sprinkles as well. And I'm going to leave it at this Marge 
was definitely wrong on the stand saying that Bart was only worth $5 for yeah. mowing the lawn. She should, she should have been like, you know what? Burns his fault still, nonetheless. Medical bills. Obviously, it was written as it was written. Yes. But the $5 for mowing the lawn that Bart couldn't do, that was a little bit off. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, I do was... have to say, I never got paid mow, to mow the lawn, even though our parents said they would pay me. So, um, yeah, a little bitter about that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's finish it off with a character profile. And we're going to do a character profile on our favorite horrible lawyer, Lionel Hutz. Uh, his profession, Springfield's most prominent shyster. Yes, he is. He is. Education and culture. Attended Harvard, Yale, MIT, Oxford, the Sarborn, the Louvre. However, briefly. <laughs> I don't think he actually so, went to any of those schools. Or maybe he did attend and got caught kicked out after like two weeks. Yeah, probably. Now, um, his now, address? Here's, my qu- oh. now here's my question with Lionel Hutz. Did he... Was he the the source of Better Call Saul, Saul Goodman from Breaking, Breaking Bad? I don't was that know. His, was that the, uh, God, the, why, why can't I think of, you know, when. The likeness? Yeah. Maybe. God. Words escape me. Yeah, I don't know if it was Inspiration, that's the word I was looking for. That's the word. I mean, maybe. I'd have to look it up. Yep. Um, his address? Known to reside at the YMCA. <laughs> uh, language, marginal command of legalese. Mm-hmm. His tools of the trade. Promotes himself using smoking monkey statu- statuettes. Pens that look like cigars. Exquisite faux pearls. And the sponge <laughs> card. I want a sponge card. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Although yeah. it might be ruined after the first time because yeah. <laughs> you just wiped it on your forehead and or mop something up on a counter and all the words rubbed off. I feel like if you scrub anything with a sponge, it, you know, it deteriorates. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, and then music to his ears is ambulance sirens. I mean, he's a, an ambulance chaser. Yep. He is. And to finish off, we're going to quote the late great Phil Harmon and Lionel Hutz. Wrong. You are not fine. You are in constant pain. <laughs> Aren't we all? Uh, all right, guys. So, you can find us on the webs at uh, the Facebook. Um, just go the Facebook. <laughs> the Facebook. <laughs> the Facebook. The Facebook. The Facebook. Uh, just type in The Simpsons Did It and you'll find our page. You can find us on Twitter, The Simpsons Did It PC, Instagram, The Simpsons Did It Pod. Um, you can listen to us on every major podcasting platform. And as we mentioned earlier, we have our own YouTube channel for our podcast as well. So make sure to go on there, subscribe, and wait for new episodes. I'm still publishing some backlogged episodes. Um, So we'll get those up and running for you. And then hopefully by the end of this episode, by the time you guys hear it, um, we'll we'll be up to date. So you'll be able to follow along on all the new episodes on our YouTube channel. So until next time, I'm Steven Skolansky. Hello, everybody. I'm your co-host, Robert Skolansky. (laughs) And this has been... (laughs) No. (laughs) <laughs> okay, fine. And this has been The Simpsons Did It. Shh.